Uh, I want some of you all, I want you all to remember this, that cemeteries are packed full of gifts. Cemeteries are, are just oozing out with witty ideals and inventions that end up buried in the ground because we don't use them. Yes. And we needed to hear Leanne's gift this morning. Yeah. I didn't speak with her before service. Nobody told her. In fact, we didn't know she was coming. But she brought her gift into the yes. house of the Lord. Lord. And we have to use it or lose it. Amen. Amen. We have to, you come on, bless it. We have to use it or lose it. And it's a sad story when we put it in the ground and nobody gets to you. So thank you for being obedient today, Leanne. And thank you for letting your gift make room for you. This blessing is coming through for you this week Amen. because you were obedient to the promise of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right, my friends, we are in the Advent, the second Sunday of Advent. Uh, Advent deals with the coming of the Lord. And so on the second Sunday of Advent, we are going to look at a prophetic word from the prophet Isaiah. <coughs> And we're going to go to chapter 2, Isaiah, I'm sorry, chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. And we are going to give attention to the first five verses. Zach is going to bring that up for you from Isaiah chapter 11. And I'm going to uh, teach today from verses 1 through 5. Isaiah 11. One through five. If you have it in your Bibles, open that up and stay, keep track with me. Isaiah chapter 11, one through five. And I think uh, Zach is using the King James Version or the New King James Version. Thank you, sir. These words are recorded there. Let's stand for the word of God. Word of God is worth standing for. Amen. We stand, the bailiff will tell you to stand when the judge come in the room. And the judge might be crooked. <laughs> but we, we need to stand for the word of God in the house of God. Amen. Amen. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Verse 5, let's read 5 together. Righteousness. And the faithfulness of his Oh, there's a lot of mumbling going on there. Come on, let's read it together, everybody. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins. And faithfulness the belt of his waist. This is the word of God for the children of God. Amen. Say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God bless you as you are seated. Today I want to talk to you for a few precious moments. 
simply a sermon entitled, A Promise Kept. A Promise Kept. When the children of Israel were being dominated and ruled by the Assyrian Empire under the leadership of their vicious king, Shennacherib, they needed encouragement. They needed a boost. They needed a push. Because they were dealing with so much oppression. They were separated from their leadership. They were separated from their own independent rule. And they were occupied by an evil force. And God needed to encourage them because they were about to encounter even more oppression because the Assyrians or the Assyrian Empire would be eventually defeated by the Babylonians and the Babylonians would then conquer and take Judah. So before that uh, time of total conquest and turmoil, God sent a word. And he sent that word through his prophet. Because the prophet has the responsibility of giving the people what thus saith the Lord, even when it is not what the people want to hear. The prophet has to declare a word sometimes that's hard. A word that's sometimes brutal and rakes the people over the coals to try to get them to change. But in chapter 11, there's a transition. And this word is a word of hope. Because after you whoop a child, you should also soothe a child. I have had many whoopings in my life. And after a good whooping, my mother would always take me and cradle me and hold me in her arms. Because chastisement alone leaves one bitter and cold. Yeah. But when chastisement is followed up with compassion, you learn more how to adjust and change your behavior. Mm -hmm. So here in chapter 11, the Lord sends a word through the prophet Isaiah. And the word says to Israel, I want to give you this promise. And the promise is that even though the Assyrians have taken the people captive, there's still hope. Even though Shennacherib has dropped his vicious hammer, there is still something to look forward to. And what is that something that they should hold on to? Well, in verse 1 of chapter 11, we're told that there is a rod that shall come forth. Now, my friends here, a rod might be seen as a scepter because we're talking about something that the king would hold. And the king would generally hold a scepter because it's a symbol of power. But prophetically, in this word in chapter 1, the prophet is saying even though Judah has been cut down, even though Israel has been left in ruins, there is something coming up out of the ruin. Uh, something will rise up out of this time of turmoil. And you can follow the lineage of that something back to old man Jesse. Jesse, who was the father of David. Jesse, who really didn't want David and made David feel inferior to his seven older brothers. Jesse 
is a minor figure, really. But minor figures sometimes play major roles. Jesse's role was to father David. Because Jesse was a link. You see, Jesse's daddy was a man named Obed. Obed was the son of Boaz and Ruth. Obed's parents were the line or the linkage to continue a history that goes back into Naomi, but it continues to go back until it finds its way to Noah. And Noah had three sons. One son was named Japheth. One son was named Ham. But the older of the boys was named Seth. Seth is the progenitor or the father of the Semites. Because when we take that uh, uh, ancient name and we give it Greek connotations, Seth means Sem, S-E-M, in the Greek language. So why is that significant? Because Sim equates to Semites. And who, do, who are the Semites? The Semites are the Jews. When someone says something negative or evil or angry, like Kanye, about the Jewish people, we say that Ye is anti Semitic. So to be anti Semitic means that you hate the Jews. Well, if we follow Sim, or, Sim, or the word Semite, we'll take it back to Noah's son, Shem. I'm sorry, I earlier said uh, Seth, but I really wanted to say Shem. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem is the father of the Jewish people. Even though we often hear Father Abraham as being the father, Abraham had to have a father. And that father traces its lineage all the way back to Shem. Shem and Semites. Why is that important? It's important because the author here, Isaiah, tells us that a rod is going to come out of Jesse. Now, my friends, I want you to keep in mind that Jesse has some guilty stains because Jesse who was a magistrate decided that he no longer had affections towards David's mother Nineveh and Nineveh was put away in another house outside of the home house with Jesse and his son Jesse made plans to have intercourse with uh, Nineveh, Nineveh's hand servant or maid servant. But the maid servant was loyal to her uh, uh, master or her mistress, and she told the plot to Nineveh. And then Nineveh pull a quick one over on Jesse, she goes in dressed like the maid servant and lays in the quarters and Jesse comes in thinking that he's going to be having intercourse with the maid servant and ended up having intercourse with his wife. <laughs> I think they call that a double cross. <laughs> Nine months later, she brings forth a son named David. <laughs> David is, an ans is a descendant of Obed, uh -huh. who is the offspring of that great woman, Ruth, and the kinsman redeemer, Boaz. Jesse 
is a minor figure. But out of Jesse comes a major leader. Amen. Jesse really is the villain in the story, but God will use a villain Amen. to produce the greatest king among the Hebrew people, King David. But after several generations and after uh, many years of the monarchy, the Babylonians came along and took the upper echelon or the cream of the crop of the Jewish people or at this point uh, the Hebrews because they were not really called Jews until after the exile. They were called Jews uh, after being uh, returned from Babylon under the leadership of Ezra and Nehemiah. They're still called Hebrews at this point. Well, the Hebrews lost their royal leadership. They were no longer allowed to select their own king. They lost that authorization when they became a subject people taken to Babylon. So the Babylonian kings like Nebuchadnezzar, uh, like Darius and Cyrus and Ahasuerus, they appointed governors for Judah, but they couldn't select the king. It seemed like the monarchy was over. It seemed like the kingship in Israel was over. Because the tree had been cut down. The tree was David and Solomon. After them, Israel's monarchy began to diminish until it was no more. All that was left was a stump. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I think that uh, a stump is something left in the ground that looks worthless. <laughs> There's no longer a tree there, right? right? The trunk is gone. The branches are gone. All that's there is the stump. It seems like a stump is just something you stumble over. Mm -hmm. mm. Seems like a stump is something that's in the way. I, I got a couple of stumps in my yard now. I I'm going to get somebody to grind them stumps one day because they're just in my way. But here, if you look at the text carefully, the text is juicy right here. Because it says in 11.1 that there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. What is the stem of Jesse? What's the stem of Jesse? I just talked about it. The stump of Jesse. Because when you cut down a tree, all that's left is the stump. Even if it's down in the ground, it's a stump. Right. Even if you try to get it as low and level as possible, it's still a stump. That's what's left from Jesse. Mm -hmm. But because God made the promise, and the promise was to David that his lineage would produce a king forever. And so, in verse 1, we get a promise right off the top. Off the top, it says that a rod is going to come out of the stem. Now, a rod is something that's strong and sturdy. And it's amazing here that the prophet says that out of something that is no longer visible, out of something that's no longer viable, something is going to come up. A rod. It's going to come out of the trunk. Out of the stump, rather. And it's going to continue the lineage of Jesse. And it calls Jesse's name out, not because Jesse was 
the good one, not, not because Jesse was the promised one, but Jesse was the conduit. Jesse was the way to David. Jesse was the connection from Obed to David. And my friends, no matter how worthless we may think a person is, mm -hmm. God has a way of using even those that we minimize and categorize yeah. and we compartmentalize that they can't do but so much and can't but so much good come out of them. Out of Jesse comes David and out of David comes Solomon. Amen. A rod shall come out of that stem and a branch shall grow out of its roots. An old stump in the yard that's just there as an eyesore to trip you up. Out of that stump, you may notice five feet to the left or ten feet to the right, you may notice a sapling starting to push up out of the ground. It's, that's because even though they cut down the tree, they didn't go down and get the roots. Amen. Amen. Even though they cut down the tree, they did not destroy the tap root. Right. So you might not see anything happening beneath the surface. But below the ground, even though there's only a stump there, below the ground, there's a tap root. Hallelujah. And the tap root is digging and it's, it's uh, 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 drilling and it's pushing its way down to the water source. And what the tap root wants to do is tap into the water. Yes. Because when the tap root hits the water, it sends it throughout the whole system of roots. Amen. And if you don't pull up that tap root, if you're not careful, you're going to see something start to push up around the stump. Amen. The stump may not produce anything ever again, yes. but around the stump, you will see little saplings start to pop up. You wonder where these little trees come from. They come from the fact that you didn't get the tap root. Yeah. And when the devil comes to destroy Judah and destroy Israel, he might have cut down the tree, but he didn't cut down. He didn't get the tap root. Amen. And so our hope and our faith is not always in what we can see. Hallelujah. Our hope and our faith has to be in that which we can't see with the natural eye. Because beneath the surface in your life, God is doing something. Yeah. Under the surface, God is moving something. Yeah. People may criticize and ridicule what they see on the outside, what they see with the facade, what they can see with the eye, but they don't know what God is doing behind the scenes in your life. They don't know what God is doing underground in your life. They don't know that God is still healing you. God is still revealing to you. God is still working in your life. And so the taproot hits something and the taproot starts to eat and drink and to pull nutrients out of the water. Thank you, Lord. And from the roots starts to grow a sapling. The sapling here is what uh, Isaiah talks about. A branch shall grow out of his roots. Because the branch represents the promise of Almighty God. And we have here a word to give Israel hope that out of the ground, out of Jesse, who was insignificant, comes something significant, a rod. And the rod uh, is symbolic of royalty. The rod is symbolic of authority and power. And he says, also, the branch shall grow from the roots. Thank you, Lord, that there's still hope yes. in the ground. There's still something to look forward to, even from the stump. 
here comes the branch. And the branch will overshadow the stump. The branch will allow us to not focus attention on the stump, but talk about the new growth. Someone shout new growth. New growth. He says in verse 2, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon that which is growing out of the roots. The spirit of the Lord. The Holy Spirit. The ever-present spirit of God shall grow out of this root and it shall be invested in the branch. And my friends here, in, in verse 2, it begins to give us a picture of the seven spirits of God. Make sure you note this. It, it gives us an understanding of the seven spirits of God. Isaiah 11 and 2. The first is the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is everywhere. The spirit of the Lord cannot be contained. You might not even anticipate it, but it's in here right now. The spirit of the Lord, that's the first one. The second is the spirit of wisdom. Someone might call it common sense. But I will tell you that it's the ability to discern. It's the ability to look beyond, to look behind the scenes, to see more than is actually there. That's the spirit of wisdom. Followed by that is the spirit of understanding. I like to call it the spirit of oughtness. You know that spirit that guides you and tells you, don't go there. <laughs> the spirit that tells you, uh, don't get involved with that. You know, when you say, something told me not to go down there. Yes. <laughs> that something that you're talking about is the spirit of understanding. And you don't gain that spirit just by waking up in the morning. That comes through prayer. That comes through walking through life. That comes through reading the word. That comes through living a committed life. So we have, one, the spirit of the Lord. Two, the spirit of wisdom. Three, the spirit of understanding. Four is the spirit of counsel. <coughs> counsel. Making good decisions. But also being able to give a godly word to someone who needs direction the spirit of counsel that helps to shape and to mold your approach and your understanding but also your appreciation of others and your ability to share your compassion the spirit of counsel also the next is the spirit of might the spirit of might doesn't mean that you're strong. The, the spirit of might doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're powerful. It doesn't mean that you have muscles. What it means is that you have strength. Strength does not always equate to mass power. Strength sometimes involves restraint. Strength sometimes involves pushing away. Strength often involves being able to forgive. Strength also involves being able to adapt. Then he talks to us about the spirit of knowledge. The spirit of knowledge is that intelligence, that sharpness, that creativity, those witty ideals, that mind to take nothing and make something out of it, that ability to address a need and to fill in the blanks with whatever you have. Our ancestors had this incredible spirit of knowledge. They were able to take a little something 
and modify it and use it and embellish it and cherish it and make it work in their situation. Then the last is the seventh is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Not like he's a ghost or goblin. Not like he's scary and vindictive. This fear of the Lord talks about reverence. Amen. Reverencing. Hmm. Uh, it talks about respect. It, it, it talks about humbling yourself before God. It talks about bowing down before God. It talks about acknowledging that there is no God but God. And beside him, there is nothing that can stand on the left and the right. The spirit of the fear of the Lord means that you give God the ultimate respect. In worship. In prayer. Here, we're seeing that Isaiah is giving the children of Israel a promise from God. I'm going to send you a comforter. But before I send the comforter, I'm going to send Messiah. I'm going to send one who will take all of the failures of the previous generation and perfect them and make them a total and complete package of faith in God. What he is promising us is that God has not abandoned us. What he is promising us is that God has not turned his back on us. What he is promising us is that even though Israel is cut down, even though Judah is cut down, the stump is left. Amen. And the stump is an opportunity. Amen. The stump is hope. Mm. The stump is the future. Because out of the stump will come forth the rod. Mm. Out of the stump will come forth a stem. Out of the stump will come forth a branch. And we, my friends, are the leaves on that branch. Amen. Christ Jesus is the branch yes. that stretches far and wide because the root system goes down deep and stretches out far. How far does the root system go? The root goes all the way down to Adam. It comes up through Noah and Shem. And it continues through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. It continues through Moses and Joshua and Caleb. It continues through the prophets and the prophecy until it makes its way to David, the great king. And from David, you will start to see that the enemy saw that it was too much power. The enemy saw that it was too much glory and too much majesty. So the enemy plotted and schemed and planned to cut down the tree. But the enemy didn't know that beneath the ground Jesus. the tap root was still alive. Beneath the ground the tap root was searching for water. Beneath the ground the, tra the tap root found a rock Hallelujah. And the rock that the tap root found was Christ Jesus our Lord. And the tap root wrapped around the rock because the rock was steady and wouldn't move. And out of the tap root came the nutrients that pushed up through the ground. And there came the saplings in the branch. And my friends, a thousand years later, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, reigned on the throne of Israel. And he reigns on the throne now and forever because out of Jesse came Christ. And he sits on the throne forever, and his rule has never ended. Yes. So we have hope. Yes. We have faith. Mm -hmm. 
And we have with us, because of him, seven spirits of God. Zechariah says that the Lord our God has eyes all over the world, watching everything. And those eyes, those seven eyes represent seven spirits. Those seven spirits represent the presence of God with us. And so we need to understand that in every capacity, might, counsel, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, fear, spirit of God, are like eyes. They're everywhere. You can't escape him. God is so high, you can't get over him. He's so low, you can't get under him. He's so wide, you can't go around him. He's so thick, you can't come through him. Because you got to come in at the door. Yes. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. And who is the door? Jesus Christ. Christ Ooh. Jesus, our Lord, is the door. He is yes. the root of Jesse. The root is greater than the plant. Let me say that over here to the keyboard. The root is greater than the plant. Because without the root, there would be no plant. He is the root and the offspring, the stem. Of Jesse. God bless you today and heaven smile upon you. I know I was supposed to do